better than I got? I want it. I covet to have that. I never seen a time in the church where ministers were covetous of other preachers and their gifts. Absolutely split whole assemblies of God because I can't preach as good as so-and-so. So I've got to somehow kill that brother's influence. That happens on a daily basis, folks. Mm -hmm. Boasters. Proud. Look at what I've done. I'm somebody important. Proud. Boasters. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. I never seen such a bunch that's so unthankful for what God has provided. God's give them everything they need. And they can't even bow their head and say thank you, Lord. But it's rather look what I've done. Well, if God didn't give you the health to get out and make the money, you still wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. Unthankful. Not thankful for what God. God, you've not given me enough. So they rail on God. Unholy. I never seen a time like we live in. When I was a child, there were certain things done in the back alley and kept silent. And those same things today are paraded out on Main Street and bragged about. Unholy, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection. They got no natural affection. When I see somebody on Facebook tie a dog up and take a baseball bat and beat it until the blood runs everywhere and kill the dog, or to take a acetylene torch and make some man hold a dog down while he's takes a torch and burns that dog till it's dead. That's without natural affection. That's not only unholy, but that's without natural affection. That person has no heart! Cut a baby up in the womb and suck it out with an instrument and go to lunch and eat your McDonald's Big Mac and sit and talk and it doesn't even bother you at the tune of over 3,000 in America per day. You are without a heart! No natural affection, you have no heart! Life is not sacred to you. You're an animal. You're a monster. Call it what it is. He goes on. If I find my place again. Oh boy. This kind of stuff just hurts me. I hate to have to preach on it. But somebody has to. Truth breakers. False accusers. Let's take Kurt. Let's use Kurt. I believe Kurt to be a good man. I've talked to him several times. I believe him to be an upright man. I believe him to be a God-fearing man. But he belongs to a church. Rather than ministering to both of the sheep of God, they automatically decide to pick a side. And then the false accusations begin to fly. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Somebody in the church that always stands for what's right will always be ostracized. That person that stands for God, hears God, and stands for God, will always be the one that everyone points a finger at. 
Why? Many reasons. Jealousy? That's a big I want what that person's got. How many times have you heard that said? I want what you got. Honey, get down on your knees. Pay the cost. Pay the cost. But we live in a generation today that's entitled. No cost. Some people, I worked 45 years, sometimes 100 hours a week. Some people wanted to move in, take everything I had. Young men hadn't worked probably five years total. But yet I want everything that you worked for for 45 years handed over to me. Walked with God for 42 years. They'd known God a matter of months. I want to be the pastor. What's wrong with that? Something wrong with that. Entitled. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors. <laughs> Couldn't I preach for an hour on traitors? Yes, sir. I love you, Jesus, said Judas. Traitors. Thou betrayest the Son of God with a kiss? I read the scripture the other night and I wept. It said, if you think my price is good, then give me my price. And they counted out 30 pieces of silver for my price. The God of all creation was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Pastor, I just wanted to serve you notice. Football season has started, and unless you change the whole entire time of the church service, I won't be here. I walked off of a field in 1975 with all my dreams attached a plan for Woody Hayes. And I didn't look back. And if I had it to do over, I would do it again. To have someone say, I can't come to church, Pastor. I got to watch the football game. And he showed up with the television set. God help us. High-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form, underline that word, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Lord said he seeks such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Some churches have all kinds of spirit, no truth. Some churches have all kinds of truth and they're so dead there's not a spirit of the Holy Ghost one in. He seeks such to worship in spirit and in truth. A form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such, turn away! That's pretty plain. Don't go there. Stay away from that ball. That's what he's saying. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There are some people that I have seen that have been trying to find the truth for 40 years. And we're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Be 
because the knowledge of the truth, when it comes, it comes in power and in the Holy Ghost. And it will transform your life. If you have a salvation that doesn't change your life and make you holy and Christ-like, you have been duped. Because the same God that is holy Himself says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And the same God that wrote the Bible by the inspiration of His Holy Spirit said, Come out from among the world and be ye separate and I will receive you. Thus saith the Lord. Prepare to meet thy God. For He is a God of holy. Salvation that doesn't have enough convicting power and enough spirit to break the shackles of your bondage is a fraud. It is what he just told you is a form of godliness that denies the power thereof to set you free is what it actually means. There are people preaching the gospel. That in their private lives are warlocks and witches. There are people over flocks. That have all kinds of agendas in their private lives. The God that we serve is holy, folks. And He seeks such to worship Him in spirit and truth and in that holiness. Why is the church and the world in the shape that it's in? Well, the family of God that's truly the family of God. They're walking in God. And this is the final authority to them. And because they cherish the mind of God, there again, they're ostracized. Made fun of. Jesus free. Fanatics, holy rovers. The church, in the visible sense, is in the shape it's in because it has let the membership come in. Let's go back to First Kings six, chapter seven, verse. Something is wrong when you got members in your church that continually causes drama. Continually fights against the Word. Continually would rather exercise their religious beliefs in a worldly way rather than a holy way. There's nothing worse than to have a church where all you do is continually square the stones and cut the knots off the logs trying to crowbar them into place. It's grievous not only to them, it's grievous over the man of God that's leading that flock. You literally spend night after night with no sleep worrying over that. Hew it in the quarry. Cut it down and score it in the field. And when they truly get right with God and they come, they're truly going to fit in the building and they will fit. You don't have to continually saw and hammer and chisel trying to make a fit. There will be honor and respect.
respect for the leader that God's put over the flock. There will be unity of heart and fellowship with the rest of the stones in the building. No big eyes and no little U's. No hidden agendas. That's how I grew up. The old brother would stand up and say, don't offer yourself to this church until you're truly saved. And we heard that little brother, little Johnny James, he put it this way. If you belong to the church and you're still dirty and living in sin, stay away. Either come clean or stay away dirty. Because there's a difference between the world and the church. The old brothers enforced that. You were put under watch care. And you fit when you got there. You weren't always trying to cause trouble. You weren't always trying to split the church. You didn't have hidden agendas. You just fit because God had already squared you in the field. Now I'm one that believes in a travel from nature to grace. You say, what does that mean? That means that God comes to you through the Spirit and He begins to pull the strings of your heart. You don't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm going to the church and get saved. It's not a thing of free will but it's a free grace. God begins to deal with an individual's heart. And He begins to tug on those heartstrings. And He sets up a conviction in the heart. There's a godly sorrow that's set up. And you begin to grow weary of the ways of the world. And you begin to sob with God. And that godly sorrow will lead you under repentance. Not to be repented of ever again. A worldly sorrow leads to death. But a godly sorrow leads to life. And when God sets up that godly sorrow, you'll start seeking a little private place because your heart's beginning to break. And he says, to a broken heart and a contrite spirit, will I look. Mm -hmm. Pride's got to go. And when you're thoroughly broken and there's no hope for you in your mind and you believe and you give up everything in your heart to God, in that day He'll be found. You'll come broken. You come as an empty-handed beggar to God, weeping your way to Christ. And He that died for you and bore your sins will take that burden off on your back and He will put joy unspeakable and full of glory right down in your heart. And you will know that you have passed from death unto life because for the first time in your life, there will be a love of God that loves the brother. A love that you've never had. And when you find yourself in that shape, the four gospel says at that point, go home, one place says show, and the other says tell what great things the Lord has done for you. And I believe that's what the woman at the well did. I believe she got a drink of that water and she had to go into town and tell it. When God saves you, you have to tell it. It just walls up in you and the levee breaks. And you've got to tell it. I hear tell about secret Christians. I don't know no secret. Because once the Spirit of God wells up in you, 
you have to tell it. The Lord has done something wonderful for me. Wherein I was lost, now I'm found. Where I was blind, now I see. All I got to say this evening, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice is in the family of God. Mm -hmm. Because God's family is the greatest people on the face of this earth. And they seek to get along. They love one another. Greater love has no man that he would die. His friend. Jesus died for the true believer. God bless you. I hope everybody goes to heaven. The thought of one lost person makes me weep. I hope all call on God while they have time and opportunity. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.